Well, here we are. We are officially live, and uh, it is Art Talk. <laughs> and um, it is March 7th. Mm. March 7th already. No, it was just Christmas, wasn't it? Seriously. Wasn't it just Christmas? It seems like it, yes. Yeah, it does. Um, I think this year is just going to fly by. It's going to be one of those years again where it just flies by. Yeah. Um, anyways, how are you today, Lauren? I'm great. Uh, it's a nice sunny day here and uh, and I'm ready to go. How about you? Yes, we have another rainstorm come in. Uh, it rained for off and on for 24 hours and it was a, a pretty good rain with that little hail coming down and at times but uh, now today we have a beautiful sunshiny spring day so that's really nice yeah. and here we are March 7th and uh, you feel ready actually we're going to just jump right in right are we just going to sure. jump right in sure I'm ready okay let me uh get you tuned in All right okay so today we have uh, collage artist Kat Rains with us, and I'm really excited to hear um, what she has to say today because she does some really interesting work and, uh, and it's exciting. Um, she started off doing collages as a stress relief when she was in her 30s. And before that, she says she doesn't really, didn't really feel like she was an artist or artistic. So um, she came to art uh, late, later in her life. Um, she's worked as a career services director and for the publisher of Myers-Briggs Personality Assessment. And soon after this, she sold her first art print and the rest really is history. Um, in 2001, she quit her job to become a full-time artist and she wants to share her unique art story to inspire others to integrate art in every, every day, even if they work full time. Um, returning to work in 2004 led her to creating very little art. However, she made a com commitment to create art every day, even when she's on the road working. Carrying two 50 pound suitcases, she finds space to do art in her hotel room at night. So she's very dedicated to her art. Come on into the studio, Kat. I appreciate the opportunity. Well, you've got a lot of light around you. Look at all that beautiful light coming in. Mm. Yeah, this, is, this is my studio. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'm very it's lucky very to have a great space to work in. It's yeah. very neat. <laughs> very what? Very neat. Well, very that's because I tidied up for you. <laughs> I love it. So usually my table isn't so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> I this know. is my desk. I have a, a full art uh, table over there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good to know. So let's just kick it off, Kat, with the first question. And it's, the, can you tell us about your artistic journey? I gave a sort of a thumbnail sketch, but uh, you have so much more to tell us about your journey. So let's, maybe we could hear that. Sure. Well, you, you gave you the highlights for sure. So yeah. I started off thinking that I wasn't an artist. Uh, my parents were both hobby artists. They sculpted, wrote, um, drew, paint. They were both very talented. Didn't make a money, didn't make money at it, but they were, you know, that was something they did for a hobby. But I never thought I could do anything like that. But I always had done scrapbooking. So my mother from a very young age um, always just had me do these very rudimentary scrapbooks. Not like we, you know, you see them in, you know, Michael's today where they're really fancy. You know, this was very rudimentary, but that's where I got my start, really. I was just, you know, recording my life in a scrapbook and, you know, knitting and crocheting and paint by numbers. I was a real crafty kid, but I really thought that unless you could paint or draw, like paint realistically or draw realistically, you weren't an artist. So I never took any art classes at all. Um, in any of my history, you know, all the way through college, art was not part of my thing. Um, and I went into what, what I call corporate life. You know, I started off as a career counselor and I managed career counselors at a university. And then I went into corporate 
real corporate life, which was the Myers Briggs company. Um, and I was just playing around. I was just very stressed. That's the bottom line. I was very stressed at my job and I started doing career development on myself. And what I did was a classic career development exercise, which I wrote down all the things I loved to do as a child, but wasn't told to do. So mm. I had this list of kick the can and build forts and play with Barbie dolls. Mm. And then, but on the list in the middle was the word collage. And I remember making one collage when I was 10 years old. I still have a picture of me holding up this collage. I was so proud. And I said, okay, you know, I can't paint or draw, but who can't tear up paper, right? Mm -hmm. So one Sunday when I was 33 years old, um, I pulled out all the catalogs in the house, tore them up and made my first collage in, I guess it had been 23 years. And my heart just exploded. I went, oh my God, that was like phenomenal. It was awful collage, by the way, you know, it was very child looking and but I loved it so much that I started making them every day, uh, pretty much for, I don't know, years, actually. <laughs> and eventually I started framing them and I put them all over my office in my university job. And my colleagues and my students would come in my office and go, oh, you have children. I don't <laughs> have children. And I don't know why that didn't bother me, because these are my soul on the wall. I love yeah. these things. <laughs> and but I still had not taken any art, had not taken anything with art, no art classes. So eventually I moved out of a college job. I went into a university job. I went into Myers-Briggs company and immediately I took my first art class, which was with a magazine collage artist who was making a living in gal, you know, selling his art in galleries. So in a five day period taking from him, I went from really juvenile to not bad. And that is when I actually took one of my pieces. I uh, framed it, sent it to a friend in California. She put it on her office wall and someone offered to buy it. And from that moment forward, you know, it just got embedded in my brain that maybe I could make a living doing this, but I didn't know how that could actually happen. So I basically, I researched for four years, I met every artist I get my hands on. I went to every gallery opening, every art show. I was trying to figure out how do people actually make a living, you know, selling their art or as an artist. And after four years of intense research, because I wasn't going to be a starving artist. That wasn't part of my gig. I was going to be a thriving artist. I quit my job and I did become a full-time artist and I did support myself with selling art. And I did that for four years and that was the best time of my life and also the worst time of my life because being a full-time selling artist is actually more stressful than a corporate job because it's, it's a lot of production. You know, I, I wasn't, I was selling originals, prints and a lot of products, you know, like journals and cards and, you know, because a lot of times people want to buy little things, you know, for gifts and things. And I was supplying uh, gift stores and, doing wholesale and retail. And so, although the art part of that was phenomenal because I was doing what I loved, the business part of it was, I was like production seven days a week. Mm -hmm. So eventually, um, and I, by the way, I was never going to stop that. I loved it, even though it was stressful. Uh, but eventually life took a turn. Um, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And then I kind of had a surprise divorce in the middle of all of that. And mm -hmm. I realized, I kind of need a job with health insurance. You know, mm -hmm. that's kind of an important part of, of our living here. So my corporate job actually at that same time, just as fate would have it, had been asking me to come back anyways. And mm -hmm. so I said, okay, I'll come back for a year, you know? And I thought, you know, I'll just beef up my 401k, you know, get a bunch of savings just so that I had the security because I no longer had a, a partner that would, you know, provide half of that. Um, after a year, um, the job was so good that I said, okay, I'll stay another year. Mm -hmm. And then after the second year, all of a sudden I'm on five years. And then all of a sudden I turn around, I'm at 10 years. And my job was, uh, traveling around the U S weekly training people on this personality tool called the Myers-Briggs. And it was a phenomenal job, just amazing. And it was lucrative. You know, the golden handcuff thing is real, mm -hmm. you know, so I didn't want to leave this thing. 
but I wasn't doing any art and art was my soul. You know, that's what I wanted to do at, you know, since I had found it when I'm in my thirties, that's, that was my goal. So at, in 2015, I decided something's got to give. I don't want to quit my job because I like my job, but I got to have art. And so that was the part, Lauren, that you said the 250 pound suitcases. So I, I came up with this outrageous plan to fit art into travel. And it was basically, it was this schedule seven days a week where I would get up at 5 a.m. every day, seven days a week. And I would do my morning routine until 6.30, like get it, like, you know, eat and do all the things you got to do to get ready for the day. 6.30, if I was home, I'd be in my studio. I have a home studio. So I'd be in my studio making art. I would make art for two or three hours. And then I would do my corporate job from my home office. If I was on the road, that's the 50 pound suitcases. I would carry two loaded full size suitcases. One was full of art supplies that I could do art in any location. It didn't matter how small or how big I had it. I had drop cloths, um, paint, uh, canvas, everything you need to do art in a hotel room. So my schedule then was I'd work all day and I had to be fed and done for the day by 7 p.m. And from mm -hmm. seven to about midnight, every night I would do art. That lasted for three years and I produced a lot of art and I sold, I started selling art again. And at the end of the three years, um, I was lucky enough that my corporate job allowed me to go part-time. And when I say part-time, it was one week a month. And so I would go, I would travel one week a month for them. And then three weeks a month, I would do my, my, what I consider my real life, <laughs> my full-time, my full-time art job. Well, uh, Kat, and that, it that, sounds like I'm going to interrupt you. It sounds like you really became a slave to art, you know, your love for it. It's just like, I am not going to stop art because of life. And I think um, what you're representing, which we haven't had on the show, is a woman who is bound and determined to make a living being an artist. Um, and I think those of you out there in viewer land listening to this, you want to hear this. You want to listen to what uh, Kat did to really um, make that a reality for her. You know, so many of us are artists because we uh, and create because we just have to. It's who we are. And we if we sell a piece, that's awesome. If we get a show, that's awesome. We're not going to not make art because of not making money, you know, and um uh, I admire what you're doing here. So it sounds like you really, you really got a groove down with being a uh, uh, money making artist. Well, yes and no. So you know when I did it the when I did it the first round, uh, which was um, from 2000 to 2004, I was making a living. I mean, it was a paltry living, but I was paying my bills. Um, when I did it the second time, I actually went back to full-time art in 2018. I actually gave myself the gift of a year to play, uh, not sell, not produce, because I'd only been a collage artist. That's all I ever did. So in my brain, I thought, well, you know what? Maybe I am a painter. Maybe I'm supposed to do flowers or land. Who, how do I know? I've never tried anything else. I've only focused on collage because I had no time for anything else. So the first year that I basically was full time with art, just doing this one week a month gig, um, I took art classes like a crazy person. I mean, okay. anything that sounded good, I was taking it all different genres. After after one year, I said, well, this is so much fun. And I really hadn't found the thing. So I did it a second year. And by the way, I'd saved a ton of money. So this wasn't like I mean, I, I had socked away money every penny that I, when I had my corporate job, because my intention was always to come back. Right. So I had a little bit of cushion. And after the second year, I ended up taking a class, but well, it was two classes, one artist named um, Ivy Newport. Mm -hmm. And the other one was uh, Lolly Mill from France. Oh, Lolly. And, yeah. and both of them at the time, Lolly is still like this. I uh, did a lot of collage. Mm -hmm. Also Kelly Bray Roberts as well. I took a class from her. And they all incorporate collage into their work. And taking those classes, I went, oh, I am a collage artist. So I just had to fully explore. But by taking those classes, what happened is I started bringing paint into my collage. So now I really 
paint is a central focus of, but before it wasn't, it was all magazine collages. So, but even then I didn't know my voice. You know, I was playing around with all, I mean, I was experimenting like crazy. I have got a huge collection of experimental art and that was like three years of it. Here I'm a full-time artist, not selling, not three years. And finally, um, actually COVID was the turning point for me. I, I had kind of found my groove. I did kind of have a voice and I had been selling, but I wasn't like excited about what I was selling. Uh-huh. So uh, we, my husband and I, I have, I'm remarried. So my husband and I went to the beach uh, and I brought my, an arts, uh, basically an uh, art studio with me to our beach condo. And I challenged myself to do one collage a day mm-hmm. in one hour. That's it. You only had one hour because I wanted to be on the beach and I could do anything I wanted. Like, so here, the, the thing was, is if you could do anything you wanted, what would you make? Mm-hmm. Because I'm on vacation. You know, there's there's no rules here, right? So I pulled out very poultry um, collage materials, you know, so I brought just, you know, bare minimum. And I tore up paper one day, pasted it down. I posted it to Instagram and someone offered to buy it. And I went, oh, okay. So the next day I did the same thing. The next day I did the same, did the same thing. I did it seven days in a row and I didn't get an offer every day. But people were like responding, like like nothing like I had before. And it was because I was in complete joy. I was yeah. just ecstatic. Making, yeah. In fact, it was it was like the collages I had made when in, my, in my early 30s. I was just throwing stuff down. Like it wasn't like I wasn't following any rules. I was just doing what made me happy. And what made me happy was my voice. Tell us about this piece of art right here. So this is a... Uh, pretty much kind of typifies the kind of art I do now, which is um, I create a base layer of, you know, lots of different images within a a palette, which is my palette is papers. So I'm putting down painted papers and then I embellish, I call it collage doodling. So I doodle things on top with circles and splatters and uh, paint around the edges And so all of my collages um, have deep spiritual meaning for me. Uh So I embed meaning into them and it doesn't, it doesn't really matter whether anyone else sees the meaning because I expect everyone else to find meaning their own meaning in whatever the art is. Um, But this particular one is about kind of coming into a new place in my life, kind of well, welcoming new things. So nice. So your uh, mixed media, because that's what you are, um, is your your mixed media style. How many layers do you work with? Um, I don't know now, if I count on an average. Them. On an average, you know what I'm saying. I would say probably three or four. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so there's a base layer. That's the kind of the foundation. I call that the first draft, and then I start layering. There's a it depends on what the collage needs. So I would say between anywhere from two to five is uh-huh. how many layers I would add. But a lot of that is embellishments. You know, it's swirls or like painted marks or splatters. I consider that a layer. Mm-hmm. So, but the base layer is always either um, collected papers, found papers, like books and letters, as well as painted papers. So, so I do a lot. Your, you always do ephemera on the bottom layer? When you call ephemera, I call that you know, uh, books and also painted papers put together. Texts. Yeah. 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 Yeah, That's traditionally called ephemera, um, which is okay, but everybody has their own lingo. You know, it's kind of interesting. Do you make your own texture pages or do you just up get from other sources? Um, I used to all, it'd all be magazines and I still use magazines or books or, Uh, letters, you know, things from antique stores that I would gather. But in the last four or five years, um, I'm very heavy into painting my own papers. So I I have a YouTube channel where I not at the moment, I'm not doing live, but I I do live demos of how to make different papers. So I must have like 50 different papers that you can make. And I incorporate those into all of my collages. So for the most part, I mean, I would consider myself almost a painter, except I'm painting with the papers. Uh huh. I painted. Uh huh. Yeah. So, do you actually do paint canvas paintings that are all paint, or 
are you always mixed media, even with your canvas paintings? So I do almost all of my collages on either a watercolor paper or mixed media paper first. So that is my canvas. The substrate is a, a heavyweight paper. Okay. Yeah. And then I mount those on a cradled board usually. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Or frame them, but usually it's a cradled board. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. It's very, you have such uh, an interesting style and technique that you, that you do. We all do, right? We all have flow into our own technique. So what is your go-to? I mean, you're, you're kind of saying it already, but what is your go-to paint? Like, do you have a specific brand you work with or um, is it a mishmash of different uh, brands or? Well, know? it used to be. In fact, I have a huge rolling cart for four tiers with hundreds and hundreds of every brand. Um, but about three years ago, I stopped buying all the different colors and all the different brands when I discovered Nova Paint. Nova Paint, okay. And I, for me, it's easier to focus on primaries. So what I do is I went through a lot of experimentation with different sets of primaries. Okay. And I found out, you know, how many color combinations that I love can I get from different combinations of primaries? You know, so for three primaries, you can get hundreds of colors. Yeah. yeah. So as soon as I discovered that, I realized I don't need all these paints. I mean, I have Nova and I mean, I mean, I have golden and Liquitex. I have every color imaginable in individual, but yeah. it, for me, it's so much uh, easier to do my collages and to paint these papers if I'm only using three primaries. And mine are Thalo Blue Green Shade, Quinn Magenta and Hansi Yellow Light. That doesn't mean I'll always keep it that way, but by, by sticking to those three, yeah. all of the papers I make all go together. You yeah. Know? yeah. Well, so, you have a palette. You always work with the palette. I have a palette. And even, but the, the collage is still, I mean, you may not know I have a palette, but it's really easy because I have a huge, in fact, I have a file cabinet right there just full of um, collage papers and they all go together. Yeah. So it just makes it very easy. I'm not, um, I'm not distracted by the next squirrel, you know? Yeah. Now, Lauren, I'm going to ask her another question unless you have a question to ask because it's about what she's talking on right now. Um, you're, and you've muted yourself for some reason, Lauren. Mm -hmm. While you're fixing that, let me just ask you, because, you know, this is the meat and potatoes of having a conversation when we really start talking shop, you know what I mean? And diving into the, I think it's very intimate what we do in the studio, how we do our creativity is just an incredibly intimate process of our art, right? It's like what you were saying a little earlier, um, your pieces become spiritual and have deep meaning for you. Maybe nobody else will get that depth of meaning from it um, because it's coming from your own soul, your own spirit. So in your creative process, when you begin a piece, okay, when you begin a piece, do you have an intention that you set before creating the piece and then mm -hmm. pull out your stash um, and have it around you? Even if you don't use all that stash, have it around you and then dive into the creative process? Yeah, it, it's not always the same, but the intention is always to first quiet my mind mm -hmm. and ask in a higher power to do the creating with me and through me. So I light a candle. I just want to be at peace. I want to be quiet. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what I do is I, I'm very intentional about the papers I select. So even though I have thousands of papers to choose from, before every collage or every series of collages, I sort all my papers. So I'm only actually collaging with maybe 30 papers. Mm -hmm. And they're all papers I'm in love with. Like when I touch the paper, I get like goosebumps. It's like, oh, I got to use that paper. It's so beautiful. So everything else goes in the file cabinet. So I have 30 papers. And by the way, not just 30 papers. There are 30 papers in different values. So let's say I'm going to do a teal, blue, and green collage. I'll have teal, green, and blue papers. But then I'll also want light, medium, and dark values in each one of those. So I would have nine piles of papers plus a pile of neutrals in different values as well. 
So I don't have that many papers out. Uh, I used to uh, collage with like papers. And uh, Lauren, you said my my table looks so neat. But if I don't keep things kind of um, minimal, it's like overwhelm. So In fact, I, I started, I was making a collage the other day. because I make a collage a day now. I'm doing the 100 day project. Oh, you so are. I, I was doing a collage and I had accidentally not cleaned up between collages. And I mean, literally this table was like, oh my God, I can't see anything. <laughs> And it's not necessarily things I love, you know, but when you only have things out that you just like, you want to eat them, you love them so much. Love them so much, yeah. It, it makes it much easier. So, yeah. Did that answer your question? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There was, a, yeah. I'm going to bring up another piece here because I think uh, it's really beautiful. And um, let me bring it here. Right there. That's just beautiful. Uh, really, you, you brought that together. And um, you've got a, a painting on top, or is that a stencil or a stamp? But you have, you know, your vine on the, on the top. That's your focal point, right? So mm -hmm. when you started this piece, did you know you were going to put that as the focal point? Or did that evolve during mm -hmm. the process? You know, so the, I guess the second part of my story that I was just saying, saying before, you know, I, I get my only favorite papers out there. But what I do is I look at my favorite papers and I, I pick the one that is just saying, basically screaming, you got to use me. Mm -hmm. And so the one on the bottom, the bottom left, it's kind of like, a, yeah, that one right there. It's kind of like light blue. And that is actually a paper made with straws. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm blowing wow. straws. Nice. Uh, that paper just spunk, spoke to me. So what I do is I take one paper and then start building contrasts against it. Okay. So I knew I wanted to do a, a small series with, this is an image transfer that, that plant. So I, I already had selected, I think I have six of those in a little series. So I wanted six different image transfers that were black and white, but I needed a spot to put it, you know, to have something like that, you need a kind of a quiet spot, you mm -hmm. know? So I, I knew I needed something that wasn't as busy. But I make the first layer of that first, the bottom layer, that collage, which is all the, everything underneath the image transfer was put down first. Um, again, just by uh, starting with a paper that I'm crazy about and then building contrast on top of it. And then the image transfer goes on at, at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I hear you, Lauren. Oh, but you just went out again. Hmm. It's really weird because I'm not doing anything. It's just live. We so. can hear you now. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask my question while you can hear me. <laughs> the question is, what would you say to a beginning artist? Somebody who's just beginning, what message would you say to them? Well, it's a great question. I mean, I... You know, for a good part of my life, I thought I was a beginning artist. I would label myself that way. And I think the most important part of beginning is not trying to make good art. Like, yeah. I think making experimental, fun, play, you know, I mean, you know, the author named um, Annie Lamont, she wrote a book called Bird by Bird, and she was actually writing about writing, but her her philosophy was you got to make a lot of shitty art. And she actually said that. And that's how I kind of think about even now, you know, in order to make a good stuff, you got to be willing to make bad stuff, which means I go into art making. And this is what I say to, you know, people who say they aren't artists or they can't, they're not good at it is that you don't get good unless you're willing to play. And that might mean not showing anybody. You know, it's very vulnerable, you know, to show your work on Facebook or on Instagram. And all of a sudden you're making good art, you know, for people to evaluate. I don't even like putting my art up there unless I like it. So I hold back an awful lot of art. I shouldn't say an awful. I hold back a lot of art because it's for me. You know, it's it's my privacy because it takes a long time to get to the point where you love what you're making and you are willing to risk showing it to people. And you would, might, even now I don't show it everything to people. You know, it's, it's mine. Um, 
I let people into my world in selective ways. But Lauren, the other, th the other thing is that, you know, the reason I became a collage artist as opposed to a landscape painter is because to me, collage is a very forgiving mm -hmm. medium. You know, it's, I think it lends itself to people who think they can't do art because you can, it's like something you can hold on to. You know, it's like, I can use this paper as like um, an anchor. I don't have to paint something realistic. I can take all these papers and put them together. So to me, this is just my own bias, but I think collage is like the perfect place for many so-called non-artists or beginning artists because it's like being a 10-year-old. All 10-year-olds think they're artists. You know, so if we could go into doing this from a 10-year-old mindset, and it just so happens that collage is something 10-year-olds love to do because they don't have to draw a picture. Now, a lot of 10-year-olds like to draw, but it's just a very uh, playful kind of medium for new for new people, but also for people that have been doing it for 30 years. I mean, that's totally what I love to do, obviously. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to take a moment here at the bottom of the hour to do a station identification. You are Visionary Artist Path Twitch TV channel. Thank you, viewers, for tuning in. Today, our special guest is Kat Rains, and we're enjoying listening to her share about her style and techniques. Um, it's always a fascinating process when we spend time with another artist. And uh, we still have a lot of time left. We're only halfway through the hour. So we have more questions to ask Kat. And don't forget, viewers, you are very, very welcome to post a question to her in chat. And we will feed it to Kat to answer for you. So... Without further ado, we're going to dive back in to Kat here, and uh, I'm going to kick the second half off with a question. So um, in the community of artists that I walk with and belong to and associate with, we really believe that as an artist, um, we make what we love. It's all about um, creating. It's not about the income. It's not about the money. Um, it's about just being who we are as an individual and making art for love's sake. So I'm just curious um, because we're all so different. If you were to, and maybe you've already answered this, Kat, so maybe I'm being redundant with this question, but what is the reason what is the true reason, your your core reason of why you make art? Hmm. Wow. I don't know if, there anyone, if anyone's ever asked me that. Um, I make art. I make art as an extension of who I am, which sounds so trite and simple, but it really helps me to express and connect to the inner being, you know, my own inner self. To me, it's a spiritual practice. It's the same as meditating, praying. It is prayer um, doing art for me. So when I do art, I can connect to myself at a very deep level that I may not be able to do if I'm just walking down the street. Not that you can't do it walking down the street, but this is my form of meditation. That's why I do it. That's the primary reason. The secondary reason is, um, is that I do uh, want to make a living from art. That's always been my passion for in my thirties. You know, even when I was making art that wasn't sellable, I was always thinking, how could I turn this into a living? Because wouldn't it be great to spend all your day actually doing what you love? You know, mm -hmm. that's always been the kind of the overarching thing. It just took me a while to figure out how to actually monetize something you love because when you monetize it it takes some of the love out of it mm -hmm. which is what I learned the first round being a full-time artist you know because I was you got to make if you're going to if you're going to make that your living you got to be selling a lot yeah. and that takes a little bit of love out of it yeah a little bit of love out of it that's why you need an assistant <laughs> I do have a I have a couple oh good <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's, you know, I'm an author and uh, I'll have to tell you this, uh, you, you don't want to market your books or worry about any of that stuff. You give it to the, the publisher to handle for you because it takes away from the creative edge of it, you know, yeah. and uh, it's the same thing with my art, you know, I'm not going to worry about any of that. I let the people come to me and invite me. And when you surrender like that and release, it does happen. They come. You know, you put out, you put out uh, some things, but at the same, I just retired last year. So I'm enjoying this first year of transition into not worrying about a penny anymore. You know, nice. so it's very nice. And um, it's bringing a, a difference into the studio too, which is quite uh, exciting, you know, so there's so much for us. And like you said, it's, it's who we are and it's part of our life and it never, it never stops. So do you have a personal relationship with your materials? I mean, are they just products or are they really you, an expression, an extension of your personality? Or are, are you talking about my paint or my canvas? Whatever your products are that you work with. Um, I don't know if I have a personal relationship with those. I have a very personal relationship with the art as I'm making it. In fact, as I'm making it, it tends to trail around with me. I'll give you an example. So this is my project right now. I'm doing 100 collages, little collages. So this thing goes everywhere I go. Like it's always with me. It's always open. I'm always looking at it because this is my current love. So I would say I have a deep relationship to the art I'm making now, even if I'm on the road, that art is somewhere very close by so that I can, I don't know, I just love being with my, being with the art, you know, as it's in progress. Yes, I'm an avid art journaler and I, some of my journals get published in Art Journaling Magazine. So it's really exciting to always meet another person who loves art journaling, because that's what you're doing now, art journaling um, for that 100-day uh, process. So it's really exciting. Lauren, I know I cut you off. <laughs> it was interesting what you were talking about. Um, but I'm, I'm curious to know, um, what are your inspirations, Kat? Who and what uh, inspires you to do your art? Where do you get, where you draw your, your inspiration from? Um, you know, the inspirations are wide. Um, part of it is, you know, other artists I see, you know, I get excited about what they're doing and I, I don't want to do their art, but it makes it in. And by the way, there's so many of them. I collect, I basically collect artists on Instagram, you know, like who really excites me. Um, but to be honest, Lauren, what really excites me is the papers. <laughs> so I make papers and I fall in love with these papers. And so the papers are kind of like calling me and saying, oh, you got to turn me into something. Yeah. So the piece that's on the screen um, is absolutely one of my all time favorite pieces. But every single time I make a collage, it always goes through an ugly dog face. I mean, it's rare that I don't think it's like bad. But now I know through experience that making a so-called bad collage is part of the process to getting to the good collage. So if I can just like stick with it long enough and add, you know, different layers here and there, almost all my collages now turn into something I love. Even the, what I consider the ugly ducklings turn into be, you know, something that I'm absolutely enthralled with. Yeah, it's interesting that just by adding a few more pieces of paper or some paint, mm -hmm. And, uh, some kind of an abstract addition to your art yeah. and what it, what the final product looks like. Yeah. That's the thing with collage, you know, just adding, even though it, at one point, you know, the, my first draft stage, it looks totally undone, but then I add some molding paste dots and a little swirl and a little splatter done. All of a sudden it just looks like it's complete. And, you know, you don't know that until you um, experiment, you know, and play and add some more in a place from, I don't care if it's good. 
I just care that I'm having a good time. I'm in love with the piece. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That, that playfulness I think is crucial in studio. Um, otherwise it becomes just a pedantic process, you know, and so I like getting my hands dirty, my face dirty. No, I'm not teasing. I don't get my face dirty, but <laughs> hands, not a problem. So we are going to take a look at your website, okay? And uh, I'm excited to share your website. So let me get that all queued up for us. Quick sec. All right. Oops. Oh, let's see. What did I do wrong? I didn't have it queued up is what I did wrong. All right. Let's take a look at this. This is um, Kat's website and um, katherinerains.com is the name of the website. And I instantly scroll down here because th this is all commercial stuff up there and we're going to scroll down here to the meat and potatoes which is her cat and um start right here and uh first of all i just love your story but i wanted to really um point out um this because cat this is beauty right here I'm going to read it out loud for everybody. So listen to this woman's belief. I believe life is rigged in my favor always. What I resist persists. What I have is what I want. Wherever I am is where I want to be. Every moment is my destiny and each is a gift. Living fully present and grateful, the door opens. This is beautiful, Kat. Thank you. Just beautiful. Um, this is uh, affirmations, you know, and um, I think uh, having this right on your front page as the guiding quality for uh, um, viewers, people who visit your website to come in and read, um, says it all. It's the core. I, I feel it's the core of who you are. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like I want people to um, know that that's what my art's about. That's what I'm about. You know, it's my, my core belief system is right there mm -hmm. exposed. <laughs> exposed, exposed. Yeah. Don't we become vulnerable? Um, so I'm going to, uh, I want to, I, you have, I'm going to just go over her website real quick. She's got originals that are available artwork for sale as well as a portfolio. Um, so you can, I'm just going to give you a glance, at some of the, the beauty that you can dive into and purchase if you would like to. And um, I want to highlight one when I was looking at your repertoire, it was, is it that one? No, it was this one. I think you said that this was one of your original um, uh, collage pieces that you made. Is that correct? One of the early ones? Yeah, it's actually the one I made right after I, I that I worked with a magazine collage artist. Mm -hmm. So uh, until then, I was doing pretty juvenile looking things. But this was a style of collage I did until probably five years ago, which is realistic, but very spiritual. And it was 3D. So everything, it, yeah. everything pops out. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very labor intensive, which is why I stopped doing it. But it was what I sold for over a decade. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to just talk a moment because uh, uh, it, it's been an area of uh, conversation. Um for a, a part of the community, which is using copyrighted mm -hmm. um, materials in collaging. Mm -hmm. um, now you piece together, you take from uh, master art, right? Master mm -hmm. art pieces, you cut out and you bring them together and you splice them together. And so you're, you're doing what we in the industry have come to know as transformational art. 
Okay, transformational art meaning um, you you dissect and you put together, and unless the person really knows the piece you're pulling from, um, they don't. It it doesn't say that it's that that piece, right? So I'm curious. Um, when you did you how did you choose your your materials to use? Did at the time that you were doing this, did you ever worry about copyright or about anybody? Coming oh, always. So yeah. I studied, I studied copyright, you know, mm -hmm. to make sure that, you know, I, I can sell my art. Yeah. And so the reason I focused on images, like you see on the screen right now for a very long time is because they are copyright free. Yeah. You know, so when you work a uh, year is now 1927. Mm -hmm. So art that is made in 1927 and before is already copyright free in except for there are some artists where the families, you know, yes. have actually held the copyright. So like a Matisse, I don't know if Matisse is, but Picasso for sure. Picasso. You know, there are certain artists that you can de definitely are cop you're going to be infringe on copyright, but yeah. these are all copyright free. You know, they're yeah. very old images. Now the, the fireworks is something I got out of a magazine. So if I use something that is not vintage, I want it to be so generic that I could have gotten it anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. that so someone couldn't actually say, oh, that's mine, because you could find that a hundred different places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because um, I could tell, you know, dealing with transformational art um, and working with public domain, it's, it's a lot of people um, aren't educated properly in this aspect of our art. We are in the literary world. Copyright is a big thing in literary worlds. You know, that 75 year mark is pretty strong, you know? And then like you were saying, if, it, if the family hasn't, or a publisher hasn't gotten a hold of it and republished, you're, you're dealing with copyright infringement. And so when you're working with um, collage like this, um, and, and this is a beautiful piece. I really, I was very taken by it when I saw it, Kat. Thank it's you. just really gorgeous. Um, I, I knew right away, okay, one of the important things uh, we could have a conversation about is bringing the awareness of copyright. And there are so many, um, if you Google it, you can find public domain, copy, copyright free uh, uh, pictures and, and pieces uh, to use in your collage. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just a, a, a caution um, to give artists. And, and this is one thing that I'm just offering to new collage artists is make sure because make sure the pieces you're using are copyright free because you never know when someone's gonna come in and say mine <laughs> and then want to take you to court and it, it happened not to, about five years ago a modern artist was taken to court in new york because of a, a, a just a little tiny aspect he used from you know but this is just gorgeous thank you just gorgeous yeah even her apple and snake, just love it. I, you know, and I loved your, what you wrote up about it, how at first you were going original sin concept, right? And then you're like, wait a minute, we're throwing that out. We're going to rewrite it and bring in the original blessing, you know? Well, this is actually the first piece I ever sold. Is it? Very mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Yeah. I can believe that. I can believe that. Yeah. So, so as I was saying, here's um, original works and then prints are uh, um, just prints of your original work. Is that what it is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're, they're, they're flat. They're 2D. Yeah. Um, they're 2D, right? Yeah. They're photographs. So they look 3D though. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then she's got her gifts up here, greeting cards, sketchbooks, Birkenstocks, a woman after my own heart <laughs> and uh, workshops. So um, here's some wonderful workshops that she offers. And I'm gonna go down here to, uh, I'm gonna go back to the first page because you have a wonderful offering, a free offering that I thought you might wanna uh, just talk about and and this too 
but you have a wonderful newsletter. And then you have this 33 art resources that I think is just wonderful to offer. But then you have, where is it? Is it on this page? Or did I go to the wrong place? I about guess the I, about the workshop. Uh, the free five day. Yeah, it's right here. Two yeah, it's a, actually, it's the. Uh, that's my that's my YouTube channel. So I have a lot of freebie, a lot of free stuff on my YouTube channel. Okay, okay. Catherine Reigns, so you all see it right here is her YouTube channel. So you can get to all of that because you know it's nice to have those. So it's right so here. what you're talking about is what's on the screen right here. It's college right. kickstart. And actually, okay. actually Lauren took it. Did. So it's a so it's a five day class where it's free, and I teach seven different types of collage papers. And basically my style of abstract collage um, in five days. So it's kind of like a, a kind of a entry level. And, mm -hmm. you know, Lauren, you asked about, you know, beginning artists. This is like perfect for beginning artists or perfect for people that are exploring collage. Yeah. Like they may be doing other kinds of art, but they'd love to bring collage into their art. This kind of starts them off. So you just come right here, click that and sign up. And then uh, you're on your way. So this is, does uh, do they get um, emails or do they get taken into a classroom or? Yeah. So every day for five days, they get a new lesson. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the five days, you make a collage grid with all the papers that you had made during the, during the experience. Right. So right here, come and do this, sign up, just come and do it. And, and kickstart and start something new with Kat. And gosh, just have fun with that, right? Have fun. All right, I'm gonna go back to your, oh, I'm gonna go back here, uh, your blog. She has a blog. And then of course, if you wanna contact her. So um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work. And uh, we're actually, I'm gonna bring us back we're actually coming to the end of our time. So we have time for one last question, Lauren. Um, I'd like to know where you see your art going in the future. Where, where do you plan to go next? Oh, that's a million dollar question, Lauren. <laughs> well, um, so here's the thing. I've been teaching uh, art for the last two or three years, which I love, love, love to do. But I haven't done a lot of art myself which is why I started the 100 Day Project. So I'm on day 34 of making a collage every day, but this is kind of like telling me where I want to go. So what I really want to do is make, you know, the same style of collage, but I want to make really big ones. So I want to make either landscape collages or like this is what's behind me. Mm -hmm. um, I want to make very large collages in an abstract style, but it's kind of like um, doing the 100 day project is kind of like my toes in the water. Like it's getting me started That's again. Exciting. Again. Yeah. And you know what? Aren't you hearing um, your style? I, I, I could I can see it, especially large pieces in um, restaurant lobbies, mm -hmm. in bank lobbies, in hotel I love you, Piz, lobbies. <laughs> huh? I love you. <laughs> that no. would be great. <laughs> Can't you see them? So that I think is also a whole nother avenue um, for you because you your your work definitely um, translates uh, to many many tastes. I believe you know. Well, I appreciate you saying that. That would be that would be lovely. But you know, for the long for the long term, I see myself continuing to teach though, because yeah. teaching is. I've always been, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to be an art teacher that was never on the radar, never. but somehow it just became part of who I am and what I do. So it's it a combination evolves. of both. It evolves just like art, right? Yeah. Our art evolves. Well, Kat, it has been such a pleasure to have you on Art Talks this month and to be able to share um, your incredible work uh, with our viewership and, uh, Thank you. you. The, my, my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me and allowing me to share about my journey. Oh, it's been a real insightful journey too. And Lauren, your mag has gone off again. Thank you, Kat. We'll see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Bye. Well, you guys, here we are. We're at the end of the hour. This hour always zooms by. <laughs> so I just want to, you know, what's coming up? Well, just remember, for those of you here, we only have two more months of Art Talks. Lauren and I made a one-year pledge for it, and we're winding down. And uh, so April, our April Art Talk is a very, very special guest. It's our very own Lauren Small, so be sure to prepare to tune in next month for uh, a look, a dive into Lauren Small and everything that makes her tick artistically. So without further ado, thank you, Lauren, again for another wonderful uh, art talk. I don't know if you hear me or not. I hear you. Well, it was a pleasure, and I, I really enjoyed today's session. Yes. Fascinating. Yeah. And very uh, enjoyed it very much. Yeah. So everyone out there, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching this episode and uh get ready and be here. What what's the date? April. What's what's our April our talk? April. Oh. I have to look up the I should have had this looked up, but you know, I did it. It's April the fourth. April 4, April 4. So we promise we won't play an April Fool's joke on you. <laughs> we'll be here. So you be here too. Put it on your calendar right now. April 4, our talk. All righty, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. See you soon. Bye, Bye now. Bye.